is the Rover is back, secured entrepreneurs. Last night, two of you sent Mr. Rover an email. One of you sent this video that we're going to get into today. The question is, Ms. Aurora, why is it that Mr. Tyrese Gibson is stating that he and his ex-wife had a prenuptial agreement and for four years now, the prenuptial agreement is being contested? How is this happening? So now, one of the things that many of the secured entrepreneurs know is that Ms. Aurora is a huge fan of Tyrese Gibson. Ms. Aurora loves uh, Tyrese Gibson's music. And as a matter of fact, in the video, he stated that he, Tank, Genuine, Silk, BBD, and Tevin Campbell are going to be in concert together. All I am saying is if you love real R&B <laughs> and real singing, you better have your face in the place. All right. Now, I watched the video and I said, wow, this is on top of he's really talking about the child support issue and, and him about to be arrested and things of this nature. But one of the reasons why we do what we do here on this channel and we do what we do here in the Secured Entrepreneur Movement is to make entrepreneurs aware of the dangers that you face legally when you do not operate properly in commerce. How many of the secured entrepreneurs know that, that marriage is a business? Marriage is a business. That is a legal business arrangement all day long. And the person with the largest estate will always lose. Okay. I try to let all of the entrepreneurs know this. And many of you know that Mr. Aurora does both prenuptial as well as post nuptial agreements. Okay. People take for granted that in the moment they're all in love. They're happy and glittery. But when the fit hits the shan and then the real reason is revealed as to why people were together in the first place. Once again, if you are the breadwinner, if you are the sole pro provider, if you are like Mr. Tyrese Gibson says in his video, you have a celebrity status. Oh, it's a wrap. And we do see this happening to both men and women It's not just happening to men, right? So in this video, Mr. Roy is going to get into, I'm going to say seven things. I'm going to say seven reasons why a prenuptial agreement would be contested and why a prenuptial agreement would actually be set aside in the court, you know, because it, this, this thing is, is totally not right. Okay. Can we do it? All right. So for those of you who do not know who I am, I am Miss Aurora Day and I've helped hundreds of entrepreneurs just like you build six and seven figure tax free businesses. You heard that right. Stick around. We all know this is the Secured Entrepreneur Movement. All right. Now, if you are visiting here, Mr. Roar is going to ask you to hit the like button because we need all entrepreneurs to hear this juicy information. Okay. It's very helpful and it's needed, right? Please subscribe to the channel so that we can stay in conversation with one another right now. I want to get into the video. I want to show you the clips of the video where he's talking about this prenuptial agreement. And then Mr. Roar is going to come back and list. I'm going to give you my seven reasons, the seven reasons why a uh, prenuptial agreement is going to be contested. Okay. All right. Now, secured entrepreneurs, this is the video that Miss Aurora watched here on YouTube. Uh, La Truth, the channel La Truth is the channel that uploaded this video. And I have to tell you that uh, at the beginning of the video, I don't know if Mr. Therese Gibson uh, chose to, to be comical, but, but uh, it, it's kind of funny, okay? It's kind of funny what he's saying here. Go ahead and get my outfit together. I'm going to go ahead and get my outfit together. I think I'm going to go eat me some red lobster. I think I'm going to go eat me some red lobster. Okay. That whole thing had me falling out from the onset because uh, Lady Star 
is obsessed with Red Lobster. If she could pitch a tent and sleep out in front of Red Lobster, she would. <laughs> okay. And she was like one of the people who, who's talking to me about Red Lobster. I'm like, people still eat there. So when he said he gonna eat him some Red Lobster, I hit the floor. Okay. He never been arrested. He never went to jail in my life. Why? Because I don't do anything illegal. I want to send this message out to all of the fathers. This is not man versus woman. Make sure I say that. Take all that shit off the table. What I love right now is that from all of the interviews that I've been doing, all of the women who are probably always going to see things through the lens of a woman, feminist, women's group, you know, it's like, I don't care if the woman is wrong. I don't care if what she doing, what she asking for, what she trying to get in alimony, trying to crack the prenup, trying to get this for child support. I don't give a fuck how wrong she is. Most women are always going to see things through the lens of women. So I feel like we're in a real place right now where I could not be more proud of the women that have been vocal and outspoken about all of this goofy shit that my ex is doing and still doing. As a matter of fact, both of my ex, I know y'all are quick to say, playing victim, gaslighting, manipulation, narcissist, they gonna put all kind of shit on you to make sure that whatever they decide to believe about you it's what they want to believe because what? I was born a man. I got it. No one's after me. There's no Crips and Bloods after me. There's nobody in corporate America after me. There's nobody at none of these movie studios after me. There's none of these record labels after me. I got baby mama drama. Okay, so he's letting us know that he has baby mama drama. Now, I'm going to get to the part where he gets into the prenuptial agreement. The details are very simple. I had one of the most detailed and specific prenuptial agreements in place. And I can talk about this publicly because it's already been addressed publicly. Literally one of the first paragraphs in my prenup. And these are some legal words. It's called contested versus non-contested. And let me break this down for the folks that don't know. When you have a non-contested argument, that means everything about these documents is non-contested. We're not arguing about anything. There's nothing to discuss. There's nothing to go back and forth about. There's nothing to unpack. Everything that's been mapped out in this prenuptial agreement has been spelled out and laid out. She had an attorney to represent her for the prenup, and I had one as well. That's a non-contested prenuptial agreement. They have contested. They have said that there are certain things in the prenup that that they don't feel the same way about and they want to change it. But 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 and so now they're saying it's it's a non-contested prenup, and yet there's at least 15 different examples of them contesting the validity of the prenup. And one of the first terms of the prenup says that if you want to argue about anything that has to do with the four corners of these documents that she signed and I signed, you're 100% responsible for your own legal fees. That's what the prenup says. You know, they trying to get me for over a million dollars right now for legal fees. She you know she's hired three law firms. If you want to argue about the prenup, pay for your own lawyers. And when you lose, you got to pay for all of my lawyers. I got one lawyer that's been representing me from the whole time. Incredible, by the way. Tanya Mitchell Graham. In fucking credible. If you want to argue about the prenup, that's fine. You're legally able to do so. But when you do so, that paragraph right there says you are responsible for 100% of your own legal fees, which means she's now got three law firms three law firms, but she's really got four because all of the legal fees that I've been paying Tanya Mitchell Graham for the last four years 
is all going to Samantha. That's the prenup that we both signed. Okay, so you heard him talk about the prenup. Now let's get into, I'm, I'm gonna give seven reasons why a prenuptial agreement can be contested. And just based off one of the things that he said here, uh, I'm gonna lean more towards the reasoning as to why his prenuptial agreement is being contested by, what did he say, Samantha, uh, the the ex-wife. All right, let, let's get into it. All right, secured entrepreneurs, you all heard it. You heard it. Now, of course, I don't have a copy of Mr. Tyrese Gibson's prenuptial agreement, so I could not tell you the reasons why uh, the ex-wife is now being allowed to uh, contest this prenuptial agreement. But within these seven that I'm gonna, I'm going to get into right now, we're gonna come pretty close <laughs> as to what some of this young lady's reasonings could be. Okay. So the first thing that Mr. Roy is going to say as it relates to a prenuptial agreement being contested is lack of full disclosure. Now, if one party neglects to disclose all of their assets and their liabilities at the, at the time that the prenuptial agreement is being formed, the prenuptial agreement could be invalidated, okay? The court requires that both parties disclose fully their financials, okay? So we want to know about your assets. We want to know about your liabilities. We need to know all about you, okay? So that your spouse, your soon-to-be spouse, is privy to information that, you know, they more than likely need to be aware of, okay? And when it is found that during the time that the prenuptial agreement was being formed, there were some other things out there that maybe were, were being hidden out. Now, bear in mind, these are things that are in this individual's name. We're, we're not talking about, oh, he had, you know, several things entrusted. He had money in the Cayman Islands, you know, that's a, like if they were entrusted, they don't belong to the person. And all of the secured entrepreneurs understand that whatever belongs in that trust is owned by the trust, not the individual. So we're not talking about things like that. We're talking about things that can be found in the name of this person that were present during the time of the prenuptial agreement being formed and, 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 and they were not accounted for. Yes, the prenuptial agreement can be contested and it could be invalidated, okay? So that's number one. Second reason is coercion and duress. Now, it doesn't even matter that attorneys are present because Mr. Tyrese Gibson said in the video that she had her attorney, he had his attorney. Okay. And it sounded like, it sounded like the prenuptial agreement was signed and witnessed before these attorneys, right? It doesn't even matter that the attorneys were present. Why? Because a person could still state that I only had this attorney because my spouse told me that I, I, I had to do it. And my spouse told me that he or she was not going to marry me without this prenuptial agreement. And I, I want to be married. I want to be married. You know, I really didn't want to sign it. I really did not want to sign it. I was really under duress because I'm all in love. I'm looking forward to getting married to this person. And then they tell me, you mean to tell me you don't want to marry me unless I sign some papers. And now I'm already in it and got my time invested. So I just went ahead and I signed it, you know coercion and duress. If it is found that a person was under duress and that a person was actually truly coerced, that prenuptial agreement can be contested and it could be uh, invalidated. The third reason why a prenuptial agreement could be contested is if it is found that something in it is unfair and or unconscionable. There are some unconscionable terms in this prenuptial agreement where the court would have to set it aside because, so for example, many people like to write in there, in the event of a divorce, the one spouse will not ask for spousal support. The one spouse will not ask 
for possession of the marital home. The one spouse will not seek to be sheltered in the marital home. The one spouse will not be supported in any way. Things like that, where the court would find you're leaving someone destitute. Oh no, that prenuptial agreement is going to be contested and the court would find it unfair and unconscionable. Okay, you know, Ms. Aurora has to be careful because Ms. Aurora wears Invisalign and people say, Ms. Aurora, you didn't, you didn't say that right. Well, all right. <laughs> okay, give a tendimony a break. But that's, that's the third reason. Now, the fourth reason is really juicy because people often neglect to think about this one. The prenuptial agreement can be contested because of timing. Now, if one person says that this prenuptial agreement was put in place a week before we were married, so the timing wasn't there to really create a fair prenuptial agreement. There wasn't enough time to put enough thought into how we really wanted to work things out, how we would really want things to go in the event of a divorce. The timing was off. Okay. See, the courts want to know that enough time was given to create a clear, well thought out and negotiated agreement that is fair to both parties. And if it could be found that, like I'm saying, the prenuptial agreement was put in place maybe a week or two before the people got married, that prenuptial agreement could be contested. And I'm talking even if this took place in the presence of one or two attorneys, it does not matter. If one person can make the claim that this prenuptial agreement was done so quick, fast, in a hurry, I didn't really have the time to, to I didn't have choices. I'm, I was being told this is what I was going to have to uh, uh, agree to and I signed it. No, uh -uh. The timing was not there. And doesn't that roll into coercion and duress? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hello. You, that, that prenuptial agreement can be contested. The fifth reason why a prenuptial agreement can be contested is uh, improper legal representation. So alike Mr. Tyrese Gibson said in his video, there were two attorneys involved. One party could always state that their legal representation was inadequate or ineffective. Why? Oh, he or she did not explain the consequences of this to me. I had no idea that this would be the outcome if I signed this prenuptial agreement because I didn't understand fully what was being said there. See, that's a whole lot of legal jargon. And, and my attorney did not explain in layman's terms what that would mean to me, how that would affect me. I didn't know. See, those could be grounds for a prenuptial agreement being contested because one party is clearly stating that they were not they were not equipped with the information they needed to make an informed decision before signing this prenuptial agreement. That's a very real thing. So we, so, so see secured entrepreneurs, you get, you got to, you got to, you got to look out. You got to be careful about that one. Now, number six, I'm falling, I'm falling here for Mr. Tyrese Gibson, just based on what he said in the video. Because number six is change in circumstances. All right. Now, if there is a major change in circumstance, 
after this prenuptial agreement, right? After the prenuptial agreement, after you're married, but there is a significant change, uh, like a uh, inheritance uh, increase. Like, like he's saying, you know, they had, they asked him for his recent financials uh, and talked about the new movies that he made, you know, all these, there's been an increase in the finances. Now, the situation is not the same. Okay. There's an increase in the finances or there now is a child involved. There's a baby that's been born. Now the circumstances uh, at, at which I signed this prenuptial agreement have changed and they are no longer fair. This is no longer a fair prenuptial agreement because we have had significant changes within this marriage. So like I'm saying, this, this woman has now had a child and this man probably now has a higher net worth. So due to the change in circumstances, Yes, the prenuptial agreement can be challenged. It can be challenged. Now, it doesn't mean that it can be contested. So I want you to understand that. It doesn't mean that it, that it can actually be contested because like he's saying, she's been trying to do this for four years. She's been trying to make this thing happen for four years, okay? But it means that we're going to continue to challenge you because true indeed, when I married you, I wasn't pregnant and I didn't have a child. When I married you, your net worth was one number. Uh, but now at the time of our divorce, it's another number. So this, this thing is not no longer fair to me or this child that was not in existence when we did this thing. It's a very real thing. Okay. And the last thing that I'm going to say on this and uh, number seven, violation of public policy. This could be a little bit of what the ex-wife is gunning for as well. Because in the event that there are some clauses in the prenuptial agreement that may be incentivized divorce or address child support or child custody in a way that does not meet legal standards, you know, the court could exclude those provisions and contest the prenuptial agreement entirely. Okay. We've seen this happen. So we've got to be extremely mindful of how it is. We put these agreements together. And this is why, you know, we teach the secured entrepreneurs what these things are all about. And we go over all these things. We let you see exactly what this thing is saying. And then the two can say, okay, okay. I, I like this. I don't like that. You know, in 10 years from now, is it still going to be something that I can agree to? You know, like you have to really see the future, so to speak, when you get into these things, because yes, these things could be contested These because life changes, things change. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we know that if, if you are a high net individual and you married someone who is not there's going to be a battle over money. There's going to be a battle over children. Okay. And we see how many people are, have gotten with other people who were not, you know, on their path in life. They were not, you know, I'm enjoying your company. I mean, I like what you look like. You look great on my arm. You know, I like other physical things with you, but we're really not compatible. We're, we're really not going in the same direction. And then now when things are over, you have the opportunity to create this mayhem in my life. And that could go both ways. Okay. The, the party with the most money, who's like, oh no, this person ain't going to take me. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. They, uh, you know, people do all sorts of nasty things to one another. We know that. So we want to at all times stay away from all of that. And how are we doing that? We are educating ourselves. We are becoming fully informed about all of these things as we are legacy builders here in the Secured Entrepreneur Movement. All right. So that's what Mr. Roar wants to share in this video. Secured Entrepreneurs, please leave your comments below. And you all know you can find me, Miss Aurora Day, AuroraDayConsulting.com. And until next time, ta-ta.